Scotland. It's Hogmanay. It's 11 o'clock. It's got to be only an excuse. So there she is, Jessica Ennis. What an Olympic Games this has been for her. A great Olympic Games indeed. Well, now it's time to leave athletics and join the women's weightlifting. First up, it's Estonia's Verna Hulk. She approaches the bar. And there's the snatch. <laughs> There, done that, got the simit. Aye, it'd be an honour for them to ask me. I think you'll find I'm already the Scotland boss. Yeah, I could do that, no problem. Have you off your head? No thanks. Come and get me, Scotland. Leave him where he is, Scotland. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for today's halftime 50 50 draw, we have a very special guest with us. Someone that you'll all know from being on the telly and in the papers and that. Please put your hands together for the Naked Rambler! <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, get your tickets ready. Here we go! Oh, no! <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry, you're here. It's all right. It's quite, quite all right. Sorry. Okay. sorry. So, Charlie, 2012, what a year. How would you sum it all up, mate? James, I think I can say, without fear of contraception, <laughs> that the last 12 months to a year has been truly pneumatic for the Scottish game. 2012 is going to go down in the canals of history as the most significant year in the sporting life of our footballery. <laughs> Financial-wise, we were looking at a domino effect that could have meant checkmate and the final nail in our coffee. But <laughs> thankfully, someone grabbed the bull by the china shop and we ended up back at square leg. Now, OK, the doomsday scenario never maternalised and we have a second chalice. So, for now on, please, no more prefabricating. Or believe me, the fans might still come, but... Only under Durex. <laughs> Charlie, mate, that says it all. <laughs> and now on BBC Alapa, live football as Rangers travel to somewhere desolate to take on some team we wouldn't be remotely interested in otherwise. Here is your host, Chick Young. He shut the shot. He's <laughs> I have with me some fans of uh, oh, oh, the team that Rangers are playing. Uh, tell me, lads, uh, did you ever think that the mighty Rangers would ever be playing in, well, with the greatest respect, a dump like this against a team as utterly crap as yours? Sorry, but I think you're well out of order there, Chick. There's no need for that. Aye. It's not our fault Rangers are where they are. They, they got what they deserved. No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm not having that. No, 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 I patronised you in good faith. I gave you a platform to express your views and you abused it, so go on. Get the fuck above. <laughs> of course, no Gaelic Channel television presentation would be complete without the presence of the very gorgeous, the very lovely, the very gorgeous Cathy MacDonald. Ah, Cathy. Uh, come on, how fucking and, and get him down to you. Well, I think we are. Come on, you're not fucking your strangers to come out, keep it, keep it again, you come out down and you're leaning at me on the path, getting young, that you're the only one who's going to listen to Clifton and Jane and their take ass and it's going to get hard to get the whole of you. Well, yes, uh, of course. Uh, thank you so much, Cathy. You're looking as gorgeous as ever. Uh, go, please, and, en and enjoy the game. <laughs> I understand, however, that the game has been delayed because somebody has kicked the match ball into some old punter's garden. He says it's damaged his rhubarb. You'll not give him the ball back. <laughs> however, in the meantime, him the glagon a gore, him the glagon a gore, 
in the clack in the garden, in the clack in the garden. Glasgow Celtic are 125 years old this year. It all began with the founding principles of Brother Walfred. Speak, Brother Walfred. What is your vision? Celtic Football and Athletic Club will exist as a charitable institution. From our first day forward, we will focus our community, support families and, and help the poor. And over time, we'll be associated with, with smoke bombs and big banners showing folk shooting zombies. <laughs> so, we will play our first refereed match on Saturday at 3 and Saturday at 5. We will make our first complaint about that referee. <laughs> if we don't win it on Sunday, we will blame the whole thing on a conspiracy. Because our dream is that one day Celtic will be crowned the best football club in all Europe. J just the once, mind. Yes, and then we'll blab on about it for all eternity. <laughs> yes, these are the founding principles of Celtic Football Club. Hail, hail. Hail, hail. The order is often criticised for living in the past and not embracing the modern world. This is very hurtful to us, which is why this marching season we've made some big changes. Jim Spence, and I travel the roads and the miles from Bonnie Dundee to BBC Scotland's headquarters here in Glasgow to hook up live by digital satellite cable with a very special Scotsman. Sir Chris Hoy, Lord Jim Spence here. First up, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. It's a pleasure, Jim. So, Sir Chris, your highness, what a year. <laughs> Wow, gold medals. You're in the track cycling sprint. I mean, you wheel round that track quicker than Ur Willie's carty doing sturdy bray. <laughs> Congratulations. That must have been the berries. Uh, yes, yes, it was the, the berries, I think. And the, the other one was for the, the key. Uh, key... Uh, the Kieran. Kieran, yes. It's, that is my favourite Japanese beer. <laughs> Over your career, you've won four unforgettable Olympic gold medals. Uh, six, Jim. Six. As I said, six unforgettable gold medals. <laughs> so, let me ask you a serious technical question. Before going into a race, have you ever thought of sticking a plane card in your spokes? <laughs> uh, I think that would be brawl. I mean, as you're, you're spinning around the track, you know, Make that crack and wee noise, you know, that. Tuk, 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 tuk. <laughs> oh, I mean, what, what, what do you reckon, Sir Chris, eh? A winner? I'll think about it. I don't know if it'd be very aerodynamic, though. No, no, you're right. But, hey, it would sure sound magic. <laughs> you think about that, Sir Big Man. Uh, no, history is, is littered with, with great cyclists. There's Bradley Wiggins, the, the laddie with the trendy side boxers, the sort of futuristic hairdo Dundee men can only fantasise about. <laughs> there's Graham Aubrey, who built a bike out of a washing machine, and there's E.T., who, who quite literally pedalled over the moon. But for me, there is only one Sir Chris Hoy. You are an inspiration. Thank you very much, Jim. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> what do I think of Sevco? Well, you know, I think I did a great job of organising the Olympics. Mouse. Well, that's in a bad way, Ken. That's why all true jumbo gadgets, even our Olympic heroes, would agree that we have to do all we can to get money to help the club. You've just caught me having a snack. Is there anything finer than a square sausage? 
I believe there is. Scottish independence. That is why today I'm introducing a totally new voting system for the independence referendum. And it's the simplest yet. You'll enter the polling booth and make a simple choice. Centuries of English oppression or a prosperous future. Voting has never been easier. <laughs> this revolutionary method of voting has been endorsed by business leaders across the country. I endorse this method. <laughs> if you cut me open, you wouldn't see blood, guts, bone and gristle. You'd see square sausage. <laughs> so, when you cast your independence vote, I want you to remember one thing. Choose a squarer sausage for a fairer Scotland. Craig Brown reads extracts from the steamy novel that's got readers in the north gripped. Fraser was smooth yet firm, like a well-fired buttery roll. Morag's inflamed passion burned red, as red as Aberdeen's socks. Breathlessly, she whispered, Fuz your dues? Fraser said, I peckin. Morag crumpled like Scott Vernon in the box. Her inner goddess danced the dashing white sergeant of desire. Fraser fumbled at the quine's bodice. Her skin was white, white, white like a white pudding supper. The whiff of canoodling filled the air with an aroma as pungent as the harbour fish market. <laughs> Both loon and quine fell to nookie, stripped as naked and bare as the Aberdeen Trophy Cabinet. Fifty Shades of Brown. Scotland might surprise you. Our sights are stunning. And thanks to all the wind farms covering them, it's Guy Bloy. Which makes my hair look great when I'm posing for the camera. The natives are friendly, all right, and their welcome is always warm. And we'll leave you with memories you will never forget. Be part of it. Visit Scotland before Donald Trump turns it into a golf course. OK, guys, keep your eyes on the ball. It's the first drive in the best golf course in the world, the Trump International Lynx. Well, people say that I'm ruining the environment, but I, I love nature. I mean, if I didn't, then why would I let a mallard duck nest in my head? <laughs> it's not a journey. Shocker, isn't it? Every trembler ends, but we go on. The milk turns as we turns up the heat in the electric blanket. Scants disappear over my shoulder. <laughs> but doll, wherever you go, there I mark. <laughs> my stota, my gimp, my bird, Maca 69. <laughs> Incomprehensible. You've been involved in more than your fair share of exciting games this season, Danny. What do you put that down to? Well, the way Danny Lennon sees it, you know, if they get one, then we'll try to get two. If they get two, we'll try and get three. But if they get three, we'll, you know, we'll try and get four. And if they get four, we'll, we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we'll try to get five, you know, but, but, but not necessarily in that order. I, I mean, if... You know, if if we get one, and then they get two, we'll maybe get another one. You know, and then they'll sneak another one. But then, then hopefully, you know, we can nick another two. But, but then, you know, if they get another one, well, then it's fingers crossed. You know, and, you know we'll maybe create maybe one or two half chances because, well, two halves make a hole. You might want to call it. But if we take one, then who knows? You know, we can still it right at the death of the end. But. Above all, I'd say Danny Lennon's philosophy is 
always keep things simple. No. <laughs> Roberto Mancini, the Italian boss of Manchester City, has his own unique theories on how to succeed in football. The best ingredients hand-picked from all over the world, and the perfect manager mixes it perfectly to achieve a, a coffee of football perfection. I see. You also need a shitload of cash to pay for it. <laughs> Meanwhile, across Manchester, well, you know, a successful football team is like a right good cup of tea, you know? It's well brewed, right stewed, stish, stushied, and it's sugary, but with just enough bitterness, you know? And above all, a football team like a cup of tea should be hot. And if it isn't, you use the hairdryer to heat up. Oh! Call yourself a cup of tea! <laughs> How long have you been brewing? You're disgrace! <laughs> Right, serious scooping time, because this is about Rangers. Charlie, mate, what's happening? I mean, it's shocking stuff, right, mate? And deadly so, James. It looks to me like Rangers have sold the wind and now must reap the whirlpool. <laughs> Speak comfort to me, Charlie. James, if I could, I would. But to play devil's anorak, all I would say is, collective-wise, this is all down to the individual. Your Blue Knights, your Brian Kennedys, your No Walking Aways, your Charlie Greens, your Craig Whites, your David Murrays, your Ticketuses. Trust me, <laughs> Rangers need to get their thinking skates on because right now they're taking a nut to crack a drain pipe. So, Charlie, I mean, how will this end? How will it end, Jim? The jury's out in this one. <laughs> but I do know it all started when Rangers went into menstruation <laughs> as a direct result of using PMTs. Paradoxically, now been proved to be fair, legal and immoral. That appeal decision is final. Pending appeal, pending <laughs> counter-appeal. But see, once the genie is out, you can't put the toothpaste back into the cart. <laughs> and just when you think things can't get any worse, this news just in it, and get this, TV bosses have admitted they have finally run out of ways to film the gates at Ibrook Stadium. Straight on, sideways, jaunty angle this way, jaunty angle that way, reflected in a puddle, even in black and white. Charlie, mate, what's happening? James, for me, it's obvious that picture-wise, there is a severe lacking in the aesthetical. Well, you're, you're absolutely spot on, Charlie, mate. And we'll have more coming up when we get that later on on Rangers Gate. Gate. <laughs> hey, up. I'm Charles Green, and I were brought up to believe in black pudding, whippets, and good honest broadband from Yorkshire. <laughs> what do I say to those people who accuse me of playing to gallery, tapping into mindset and whipping up hysteria? I say, melt surrender. <laughs> Well, I, I resent the suggestion that my players have lost their heads just because Rangers aren't in the league. <laughs> Let me tell you that we are totally professional at this club. And our training sessions here at Lennox Town are, are every bit as intense as they always have been. Come on, boys! Get out here! <laughs> Celtic fans are the greatest fans in the world. The noise they make is the greatest noise in the world. The songs they sing are the greatest songs in the world. When they moan and whinge at their own manager, they are the greatest moaners and whingers in the world. And when they can't be arsed turning up and leave their seats empty, then these are the greatest empty seats in the world. Hey, it's a selling thing. <laughs> Welcome to the final of the Great Scottish Bake Off, the show that's just like the Great British Bake Off, only in this version the contestants don't pass out from hysterical grief if their scones don't rise. Well, the finalists are ready, so... Jimmy Calderwood, Kenny Dalgleish, Frank McAvenny, on your marks, get set, bake! <laughs> so, 
Jimmy, are you an experienced baker? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, when I was manager at Kilmarnock, I was well known for my selection of puddings, you know. <laughs> Bacon is special to me because it talks to me, you know. Really? What do you think this is saying? It's saying, Jimmy, get back into football management, you know. <laughs> win the leagues, all the cups, conquer Europe, and win the World Cup for Scotland. And why do you think it's telling you that? This is a recipe I got in my plain days in Holland. It's called a space cake. <laughs> okay, Jimmy, we'll leave you to get baked. Now let's have a chat with King Kenny Dalgleish. So, Kenny Dal, tell me, which celebrity chefs do you admire? I'd love to have the fashion sense of Jamie Oliver and the cookery skills of Fanny Craddock. <laughs> but standing here the now, I know I don't look like Jamie, but I sure feel like a Fanny. And what are you cooking up for us? Well, I'm mixing butter, milk, caster sugar and condensed milk. It's a favourite of myself, Owen Coyle, Alex McLeish, Roberto Di Matteo, and any sack manager that's treasured a premiership payoff. It's millionaire shortbread. Thank you, Kenny. So now we move on to Frank McAvenny. Frank, are you looking forward to following in the footsteps of Mr Kipling? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Jungle Book. <laughs> What's your speciality? Putting buns in the oven. And what are your plans for tonight? Tonight? Tonight the Frankie boy is thinking about a couple of tarts and maybe a bit of muffin. But none of your ovens are switched on. When are you going to start baking? Who said anything about baking? <laughs> it's the brand new Andy Murray computer game. All the emotion of losing tournaments. All the emotion of winning tournaments. Winning gold medals. Losing finals. And all the emotion of finally winning a Grand Slam. Andy Murray's Tennis Tears 2013. Especially for the Nintendo Wii. Now I'm just going to try my... my, my. My first tweet. Okay. To whom it may concern, I have just enjoyed a scone. Yours faithfully, Craig Brown. <laughs> Full stop. Yeah, that's marvellous. Huh? So, did I just take this to the post office? <laughs> Well, right now, some of the Tartan army are so desperate that they've written to Switzerland. You there for? Yeah, no, Dignitas. <laughs> the board of the Scottish FA announces that Craig Levine has been relieved of his duties as Scottish national coach. Uh, the decision was taken because he was rubbish. Uh, we waited just the three weeks to decide what to do. Uh, decided to have a meeting. Uh, had the meeting and decided at that meeting to hold another meeting to decide not to make a decision until the following week. And, and trust me, for the SFA, that has been decisive. <laughs> Can I help you? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm looking for a new pair of spectacles. Uh, something that will maybe go with uh, my good suit. Uh, but I've, I've got a meeting with um, my compensation lawyers. Certainly. Let's try a few styles. OK, yes. Ah, yes, these are just the job. I mean, after all, I, I don't want to look ridiculous. Absolutely not. But I think before you go, we should run a couple of tests, make sure your eyesight's fine. Sure, yeah. What can you see here? A good result. <laughs> Can you see anyone here? No. Nope. Nobody at all. Um, what is this? I have no idea. <laughs> Biggest result of the year has to be Celtic 2, Barcelona 1. Rod Stewart was crying that night, and let me tell you, mates, so was I. <laughs> From the makers of Downtown Abbey, a new costume drama created especially to appeal to viewers in Scotland. Come 
just added. When I first came here, I promised to make Rangers history, and I did. They are. <laughs> Sir Alex, at the end of last season, you thought you'd won the league, only for it to be snatched away dramatically in the last few seconds of the match. What did that feel like? Oh, what did that feel like, you know? Well, to be honest with you, you know, it felt like this. Go <laughs> Mr. James Bond. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Bond. Good evening, Your Majesty. Have you got news for me? Yes, ma'am. Rangers won the big tax case. Yeah! <laughs> Frank McAvin, your sports personality of the year? Well, if you were to ask the Frankie boy, I would have to say Victoria Pendleton, because she's got the lot, you know? Style, grace, good looks, and, and on the bike, I mean, she's such a good cycle smith. I mean, pedalist. I mean... Rider. <laughs> well, if... You know, you ought to ask me. <laughs> yes.